Any examples of the show, like what a cutting room looks like, sure, normal and sure. abnormal that we can look sure. at and maybe give people an idea as to the difference? You know? Well, what we're seeing here is this is about a seven or eight-year-old who came in complaining of this rapid heartbeat. Now, we don't do these event monitors in every single child that has a rapid heartbeat. As I mentioned before, we can eliminate a huge number of these individuals just by the history. One of the things we'll do in an office, for example, let's say a child is eight years old, comes in and says, my heart's beating fast. I'll say to the parent, did you try to count it? And they'll say, no, no, I put my hand on the child's chest and it was beating very fast. So what I'll do in the office is I'll have the child exercise. And when the child stops, I tell the mother, put your hand on his chest. Is that what it felt like? And if she says, yes, yes, that's what it felt like, I have a pretty good idea we're dealing with normal sinus tachycardia. If she said, no, 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 it was much, much faster, then I have a little better clue that maybe we're dealing with the supraventricular tachycardia. And that's when I will do what's called an event monitor. So this is the event monitor at rest as what we call a, a test. In other words, the child gets this event monitor, records their electrocardiogram, and what you can see here is a, a reasonably good heart rate, maybe about 100, and what you see is the normal P wave, QRS, T wave. This is sinus rhythm. This is a, maybe a little fast, we could call this a borderline sinus tachycardia, but you can see that this is a normal electrical conduction of the heart. So what we then did, was we then waited. And within a certain period of time, the child complained their heart was beating fast. And what they did is they called, recorded the cardiogram, recorded it, and it was transmitted. And here we can see this child going at an incredibly rapid How rate. How fast was the heart rate there? Oh, it's over 200, well over 200. So the kid must have been receiving a lot of chest pain and everything. Well, you know, more, in a younger child, the answer is they'll often say their chest hurts. In an older child, they describe exactly what it feels like, that my heart was racing and I didn't feel very good. But here's this child who clearly we documented that this was a supraventricular tachycardia. Now, if this were a 24-hour Holter monitor, the chances are we wouldn't have documented that this child had this monitor, this event monitor, for probably a week or so when we finally recorded it. This child underwent a successful ablation of that pathway and is now completely cured. Yeah. You have a demonstration here of a newborn showing us what? Okay, this is actually a, a newborn, but this is something we can see. Interestingly enough, it tends to occur more in male infants and this is the type of cardiogram that you will see in a, a baby who goes, let's say, for their one-month checkup to the pediatrician. The pediatrician puts stethoscope on and can't even count the heart rate. Or a f mother who says, you know, doctor, my baby's having these very interesting episodes. For about 8 or 12 hours, the baby will suddenly, suddenly turn pale, sweat, not feed, and just look very, very pasty. And then it goes away. If you have that history, Okay. If you have that history, this is something you may be dealing with. And this is basically a, a heart rate. Heart rate was how much there? Excuse me? How much is this kid heart rate? This heart rate is about 300. 300. And the normal heart rate for this age would be? Well, 130. 130. So it's about three times. So two it's very, hours. very fast. And if this baby is in this rhythm for a long time, the heart just doesn't pump appropriately. It doesn't have time to relax and pump. This baby will go into what we would call heart failure and begin How to... How long a time would that take? It varies from baby to baby, but certainly if the baby's in it for 24 hours, the baby's likely becomes symptomatic. And that's what the mother sees at times with these intermittent episodes. And they're very classic. My baby stopped feeding, my baby looked terrible, my baby was sweaty, and then all of a sudden got better again. And that's what we were talking about before with this. When this stops spontaneously, it's like the baby is in his own way saying, wow, I feel much better. And the baby will suddenly improve. But at times, as I mentioned, this can be just what you see in the pediatrician's office. And this is, again, a very rapid supraventricular tachycardia. Now, there are ways of, during the acute episode, stopping this. So if this child went to the emergency department, there's a drug called adenosine, which, again, has made it very safe and very easy to convert these tachycardia is to normal. It's an intravenous injection that's given to an individual when they come in who have 
the supraventricular tachycardia. How does that drug work? Basically, it just changes the uh, intracardiac um, metabolic state. Um, influxes and outfluxes of various uh, sodium, potassium, and what it does is it just suddenly will cut basically this arrhythmia to a point where it just can't exist anymore. This is what's called a re-entry tachycardia. How, how's that drug given? IV, IM? This is given intravenously.